If you would have told me that I would be up here giving a TEDx ago, uh, four years ago, I would have thought you were crazy. <laughs> What's funny is, if you look at my background, I spent a bulk of my early childhood living in the outskirts of Brooklyn, New York. And during this time, I faced a lot of adversity that shaped my attitude towards education as well as my whole outlook on life. You see, it was the friends that I had around me that ultimately ended up in uh, giving me an influence to uh, turn my life around later down the road. These friends that I had in Brooklyn, New York, used to skip school, you know, and drink and smoke and do other things instead of actually valuing education. And because, you know what they say, you're a product of your environment, I naturally fell into that as well. You see, even after I moved to Monroe, New York, and I moved upstate, you know, um, went to a different kind of school and doing, being around a different group of people, those same habits still stuck by me. You know, I still didn't go to class. You know, when people go to class, I found excuses not to go to class. When st my st fellow students would uh, spend summers you know, studying for the SATs and doing other things and going on vacations to Florida, uh, I would be back in school taking the same classes I just took over the year. You see, doing this, repeating the classes I've taken over and over again, failing, has taught me something very important. It taught me perseverance. Now, throughout the summer, uh, I was taking the classes over again, and after that year, my junior year of high school, something happened that changed my life. The so-called friends that I gained during my time in high school actually ended up setting me up in a situation where I got kicked out of school, kicked out of high school for over five months for the possession of marijuana. Now, after this happened, after students found out what happened, you know, it was a disaster. I came back, and after the five months it had occurred, and, you know, I tried to get my life together. It was doing tutoring, you know, things like that. I got away from those friends. I came back, and it was a disaster. I went to high school again. Um, the same friends used to see me, and they used to, you know, talk about how much I messed up my life and how things would never be the same again and how I'd probably end up in jail later on down the road. I share this story because not just to get, your, not to get your pity, but I share this because this is a reason, this is something that's a part of me, and it shaped who I am today. You see, during that time, even when I had failures and, and Fs in most of my classes, you know, during that time, I still had one hero in my life that I especially want to honor today. It's my mom, she's sitting right there. Out of any... Out of all the people in my life, my mom always believed in me. She said, no matter what it says on the report card, no matter how bad you do, no matter how things are going, I see something greater for you. I see potential in you, and I pray that God helps you fulfill your potential in life. And that always inspired me throughout my time at high school. <laughs> so there I was, walking across that stage, shaking the principal's hand, getting ready to receive that high school diploma that I barely worked four years for. A variety of emotions began to go through my mind. I was in complete shock that I had actually graduated high school with a 1.2 GPA and a 1,300 SAT score out of 2,400. I see some of your faces right now. You're thinking, how is that even possible? You get 300 points for writing your name. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, needless to say, when I took the exam, I was not in my right mind, right? Um, but you see, even after graduating, at the bottom 5% of my high school class, you know, something stuck, something happened during that summer that changed my life forever. One night, during the summer, I walked home, and I saw my mom, and she jumped in my shoulders, screaming, Febin, your father had a stroke two hours ago and was hospitalized. During this time, seconds felt like minutes, minutes felt like hours, and days felt like months. We went to the car, and we drove down to the hospital, and we went to see my father. And throughout that fall of 2012 semester, after my high school, um, gra after I graduated, my father remained in the hospital with little mobility to move, to speak, to eat, let alone work, and, support and financially support the family. See, it was during this time that I had realized that there are certain benefits that came through his absence, as sad as it was to see him there I realized that it forced me to snap out of my high school mindset to become the man for my family and to get a job and to you know, actually apply myself in school 
and to actually care about what I was doing in education. Think about the future that I'm leaving, not just for myself, but also my mom and my family. It was during this time that I was evaluating different options. I thought about going to the Air Force as a way of shaping my career and just becoming more disciplined. Um, turns out I was allergic to too many things. <laughs> I had a list of tree allergies like this long, and they're like, we're not going to make a special diet for you, so sorry. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but things always work out for the right reasons. So I ended up going to community college, Rockland Community College, for um, the first two years of my career after graduation from high school. And during this time, I found mentors that believed in me, that supported me, that wanted me to do well, that saw something bigger than just a high school failure who you know, got suspended for selling weed, <laughs> who grew up in a bad neighborhood. They saw something more than just that. And they helped me, and they shaped me who I am. They helped me develop my passion for social entrepreneurship. Me realize that this is what I care about, to use my voice, to be here to share my story with you guys, to be an influence. During this time, community college, I developed a lot of close mentors and supporters, and eventually, I was able to get into my dream university, Georgetown University. And I want to share this. I wasn't part of the script. I do want to share this. Um, I remember, during my community college days, how bad I wanted Georgetown University. I had a poster on the wall, on my wall in my bedroom. I used to say every night, like, I'm going to get into Georgetown. You know, I'm going to do it one day. And to see that dream finally come true is amazing. I can't even tell you how that felt when I finally got that acceptance letter. Now, moving forward, so much as I love to say that, you know, I came into Georgetown, I had a 4.0 GPA, saved the world all in one week. <laughs> you know, like most of you guys who also came to Georgetown, I mean, I struggled to find my place here. You know, I felt invisible. Right? During the time that I was in community college, I worked at Wendy's, old-fashioned hamburgers. That's how I paid for, that's how I helped my mom pay for the bills and helped pay for tuition and build character. That was my job, to scrub floors, to clean the dining halls. While my friends, the kids who heard that I was suspended and the kids who eventually helped me lead me down that path, used to come to Wendy's and tease me and say, look at you scrubbing floors, you know? They said that, this is all you're going to make for yourself. They even told me to kill myself. They told me that I would never amount to anything. Using this motivation, as much as I, as many times as I heard it, using it to, to improve myself was something that I've learned throughout Georgetown. Now, my second semester at Georgetown University, <laughs> something else happened that really changed my life. So, during the uh, Georgetown University uh, second semester, I used to stay really late at MSB, uh, the McDonald's School of Business. Stay there studying for my exams, trying to catch up on work. And I remember um, seeing these workers who used to come by, you know, clean up the floor, clean up uh, the bathrooms, the rest, everything. And oftentimes, students would never really get to acknowledge them or even thank them for some of the work that they do behind the scenes. And I saw that these are the unsung heroes of Georgetown University. Not just the janitors, not just workers like, like O'Neill, who's here today, and Evans, who's here today, but also the food and service workers, our favorite cafeteria worker, who never fails to greet us with a smile, or even the construction worker, who's building up a university and, and, and working in, in the heat to make sure our universities are running. I learned how to acknowledge these workers after meeting one and sparking up a conversation with him. And he is here today. He's in a, a little surprise later. <laughs> But um, he is here today, and I learned more about him. I learned about his background. I learned that he's interested in social entrepreneurship, as I am. You know, he also came from a different country in India. I came from India. He came from Jamaica. And I learned that we have so many similarities, but we would have never known that if we had actually got a chance to get to know each other, because he's a janitor and I'm a student, because of that divide that exists, not just at Georgetown, but other schools as well. You see, it was through that interaction that inspired me to create Unsung Heroes, which is an initiative that focuses on showing awareness and appreciation for these workers on college campuses who do so much for our university behind the scenes, but rarely get any recognition. And after I heard O'Neill's story, I wanted to share with the other students as well who have not maybe got a chance to get to know workers like him. And we did it through um, social media. You know, we shared it, Humans of New York style, as, as you mentioned, um, just to kind of you know, show their humanity. And I want to share two stories um, that really changed the way I view uh, a lot of the workers on campus, as well as my whole outlook on life. First worker, some of you guys might have known him. Uh, his name is Tracy. He's a crosswalk guard here at Georgetown. You know, if you just see him now, you probably think he's just a crosswalk guard. 
he's probably just a crosswalk guard, you know, he's working here maybe because he didn't finish his school or other reasons. But Tracy is here for a personal reason. Tracy is here because his dad died in a crosswalk. He was a pedestrian, he got killed. He's working here now to redeem his father, to make his dad proud, to make sure that students, us, that we're safe. Think about that for a second. We would have maybe never known that, would have actually got a chance to get to know him on a personal level. Other than just the hello, how are you doing? What about asking about his family? What about asking about, you know, like, where'd you come from? Like, learning more about the worker. Now, you might see Tracy on, the sh on here at Georgetown, but there are also other Tracys. Think about when you go to your workplace, right? How many of these kind of workers do you see on a day-to-day -day basis? So much can come from just a simple interaction, just a simple hello, how was your day? Getting to know each other's stories on a more personal level. I want to share another story with you. I think this might resonate a little bit more, too. Um, we interviewed another worker. Her name is Mamuna Taki. She's responsible for cleaning up Healy Hall, this building right here where you're in, right? She's responsible for cleaning up Riggs Library, but also this same place we're in here right now, right? Notice that everyone sees that it's clean, but you'd notice that if it wasn't, you know? That's her responsibility to make sure that this is clean so we can all enjoy it and we can all have an amazing event. Muna Taki talked about her experience growing up and coming here 14 years ago from Ghana, Africa. She mentioned that because of her interaction with students here at Georgetown University, she was able to learn how to speak English properly, learn how to write, and eventually end up getting her citizenship exam and passing. And now she's planning on bringing her family here as well because a student would go out of the way every week to teach her English on the side. Imagine how much can happen if students would actually interact more with the workers, other than just the high hello. I want to bring up two very special people in my life that have honestly changed the way, changed my whole experience here at Georgetown. O'Neill and Evans, can you please come up, please? I first met Evans my second semester at Georgetown University. Now, I remember once in a while, I was an occasional head nod, how are you doing, kind of avoiding eye contact sometimes, depending on how busy we are. But um, he turned out to be one of the most amazing people I've ever met. He also has an amazing story that I encourage you guys to also get to know as, as you um, see him you know, moving forward in Georgetown McDonough School of Business. And there's O'Neill as well, the first worker I've ever actually talked to at Georgetown University. These workers here are the real superheroes. <laughs> These are the real superheroes of Georgetown University. <laughs> I want to share a story about O'Neill. As I mentioned, we got the chance to know each other throughout the second semester, and I learned that he also came to the United States when he was 20 years old, and his first job was here at Georgetown University, cleaning the floors. We connected on that note because my first job was at Wendy's, scrubbing floors around the same age. We connected instantly, and I would have never known that. He probably would have never known that unless we actually got a chance to interact with each other. We, learned, we interviewed O'Neill and learned that his story that he wants to start his own business one day. He wants to start his own catering restaurant. You know, he wants to have his own franchise one day, as he mentioned. We share this story through Facebook, and students reached out and asked, how do we help him out? How do we give him a chance to achieve his dreams? You know, he's, he's young, he wants to become an entrepreneur. How do we, as students, do our part to help these workers out? We raised $2,500, and we gave him a chance to, to have a catering uh, event last semester in which he gave out his food to different students and people loved it. I would love, I'd love to show you the video, but we don't have time, so <laughs> just look on our Facebook page. But, <laughs> but um, and now, after we shared his story, we, uh, we shared the video around social media and it's been picked up by Washington Post, NBC Nightly, last night. We've shared his story through over eight million viewers have heard about O'Neill and his story. So let me give him a round of applause for that.
<laughs> O'Neill is now in his um, moment in his life when he's planning on making the jump to become an entrepreneur. You know, he wants, he's figuring out the right time, he's trying to get his catering business going. He has an email full of, uh, of orders. You know, people are ready to try his jerk chicken. I have some in my fridge if you want. <laughs> so, <laughs> and honestly, O'Neill, if it weren't for you two, my experience here would not be the same. I just want to give a round of applause, one final round of applause for the unsung heroes of Georgetown. So, thank you guys.